What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? How y'all doing? Hope all is well. Uh, I was really looking forward to doing this, but now that I've got everything laid out, it's a lot. So as the, the title says, gauges. We're doing gauges. And I want to go ahead and get this out of the way. If you're ordering, I'm using Glow Shift. Y'all can talk about them if you want to. I tend to like Glow Shift. I've been running them in my Trans Am for a long time. But we're doing, this is actually going to be an Is Pro Tac. I'm going to put it right here when I get it ordered. I've not ordered it yet because I'm waiting on Black Friday. I'm going to have Boost, EGTs, Trans Temp. That's the plan. Um, I don't know what all I'm going to get to work in tonight. But I, I should, don't nothing happen, I should get the boost gauge working. I should get this new, yeah, that's not mounted, but I should get that mounted. <sighs> Viewer discretion advised. I am about to drill holes in this perfect first gen dash. It's not perfect, it's already got a hole in it right here. Previous owner did that, and I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but I don't plan on getting rid of this truck. So it's about to get a hole. I am going to screw this to the dash because I don't have any way of really and truly velcroing it. But regardless, uh, I will say if y'all do run glow shift, that's what I was going to say a while ago and I forgot. I would advise getting these. Y'all are dirty. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. I advise getting these. They're the little expandable circuits or whatever. It plugs into your factory um, fuse box. Then it's got a spot for its own fuse and a wire coming out of it. So it'll still work as a fuse in your factory location like it was, but it'll also add a fuse more or less. I got two of them. Um, I'm going to run one to my fuse box for the dimmer, and I'm going to run the other one for the um, key on power. The constant power, I'm going to run straight to the battery. I also bought the uh, four gauge wire instead or whatever, the whole wired harness. So I have enough wire, I don't have to go out and buy a wire. And it's all color co coded and everything because I'm OCD. But, um, anyways, we're fixing to get this uh, popping off here. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm dreading this because that's a lot of wiring. Like I said, that's all sensor wires, it all comes together. And then, I just use this one. This is your um, key on power. It comes, it's got one main feed coming into that, and then it's all connecting its spiders out to the four right there. So, all of them's like the ground. The uh, This one is for the headlight dimmer, so it dims the lights when you turn the headlights on, and then this one dims the backlights. This is your uh, constant. Yellow is constant. It's just like wiring in a radio. But either way, to start with, um, you know, I, I'm just going off the instructions. So, to start with, you pick your spot out wherever the gauge sits. Like, I'm probably going to drill right somewhere right in here. You drill, I think it said a half inch to a three quarter inch hole. It'll sit under the gauge pot so it'll be hidden. But that's for all your wires to run down through. And then, well, you're going to take this off too. I'm going to take this off to make sure you don't drill through anything important. But take that off. Drill your hole. Run your wires through. And I'm going to go ahead and connect all the wires where they're supposed to be. Get them all there and be done. And then I'm going to put the gauges in the pod. And if I remember, I will make like chapters. I'll put them in the... Uh, description down there of where everything's at so you'll have bookmarks but uh, I don't want to do this but I'm gonna run the wires have them all up here put the gauges in the pod with all the wires running and everything and then mounting the pod is the last thing I'm gonna do so here we go Okay, so I've covered this in other videos, but to start, you've got screw here, screw here. Uh, you got one here. Just fill around, 
find all the screws like there's one they'll be either there or there yeah and then once you get the screws out um they say drop the steering column it's just two bolts under here but i never do it and i probably will this time because it's gonna make this a lot easier but take this cover off mine's held on with these two screws because yeah pop that off your fuse box will lay down then you'll you'll see the two bolts i'm talking about just loosen them up some let this drop down it makes it a whole lot easier and if you ain't figured it out by now i don't have my gopro with me because i'm doing this in my dad's shop because it's cold and i'm not about that life doing it outside this thing does not fit in my garage if you're new and just watching this and you don't know that by now but doing this in my dad's shop it is put time marker here it is seven o'clock p.m so here we go <sighs> okay i'm not gonna lie Dropping this down, what little I did, helped so much getting this out. So, yeah, highly recommend it. Like I said, it's two bolts. Right here. Good focus. They're so bad out of focus. Either way, it's two bolts right there. One on each side. And then it drops down. You pull this out. And then, like I said, I'm going to take a three-quarter inch drill. And I'm going to drill somewhere right here so the wires have something to go through. I forgot to mention, unhook the battery. But after you get that done, come under here. Mine is, oh, if I can see that. I've already got a good ground point here. So I'm just gonna, that's where I'm gonna ground it to. Run your wires down through your dash. You will need the ground, the orange, and the red. Orange is going to be dim, and red is key on switch. All right, so. I got these ran in. Hopefully they're in the right spots. Um, I believe this is the key. This is a key on power. I think it is for. Um, yeah. I think this is backup lamps. I can't remember. But it's on key on power. And then this is the gauge lights. Now my gauge lights. As y'all know. Y'all might know. When you pull this out. They don't come on automatically. Or, I'm sorry, let me phrase that. When you turn the lights off, they don't go off. You have to actually turn them all the way to the left, right. To the right. And then if you want gauge lights, you got to turn them to the left. So, hopefully that'll work in dimming the gauges. But, that's that. And then mine's got this few, I don't know what you call these things. They act like a fuse, like an old school fuse, I guess. I don't know what they are. But, this has constant 12 volts running to it, so... That's why I'm running the constant wire. And all this wire really does is serve as memory for the uh, lights. Because seven color gauge lights, you can change color, obviously. That's why it's seven color. But it, that way you ain't got to set it up every time you go to get in a truck. Some people, now you can run these together. This one and the uh, key on power. This one and the key on power you can run together. Uh, they just you always have to set set the colors every time you uh, fire up or whatever because it won't remember where you left it. But and then like I said, I grounded it right back there where I ground a lot of things. So we're one step closer. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna like I said, I'm gonna hook that up and then I'm gonna start with a boost. All right, so I got the ground wire. Got a constant wire, constant power, key on power, and then a dimmable power. I got all those hooked up on the inside. And then we're going to start running the boost gauge. Now what you want to do is under this horn, you got this bolt right here. You take that out, screw this in that come with the gauge. Eh. Come with everything you need right there except for... It didn't come with Teflon tape, and I've got some somewhere. i got to find it now. But, yeah. All right. So, that's it right there. I'm not going to lean all the way over. I routed mine under all the brake stuff. Come up under here, under the dipstick, and then right in there. In case you lost your instructions, that's how that goes. Make sure you put that piece to where the, the tapered in 
is going into this fitting. The tapered end should be right here, going this way, right? Yeah, the the flat end should be over here. That way when you tighten it down, it will push together and it will create a crimp and it'll seal that off. So make sure you don't over tighten that as well. And you'll do the same thing on the back of the gauge. Um, just when you run it, make sure you run it through a rubber grommet or something to where it's not gonna get caught or cut in half. All right, so now I'm here. Stand the light back up. Fairly simple. I'm trying to get this solid oh, gun to stand here. This is my dad's, and I've, I've got to get me one of these because that thing is nice. But the boost gauge is wired in. Got all the wires connected, and I got the boost line connected. It's actually hanging onto that. It probably don't need to be. Uh, what I should have done was trim these, and I didn't. But I got the EGT, I got it ran right up here, and I've got these wires trimmed. So I won't have so much under or back up in there because the EGT comes with this right here. Plugs into the back of the gauge and that's, that's your wires, but it unplugs. But that's where I'm at. Um, make sure you get all your wires trimmed up because you only have so much space off up in there that you can store wires and stuff. The boost line, I probably should have cut and shortened, but I didn't. So I'll cram it back off a pin and dash somewhere. Just make sure you don't kink it up. And, yeah. I mean, at this point, when you get to this point, it's all just matching colors. Because all these gauges come with this right here. And it's got the, the black, the red, yellow, and orange. So, just match it up. The only thing you're going to have to run extra wires for is the trans temp. And here it is. Um, as you can see, you have just the black and the white coming off the sensor. And I'll put the sensor in here in a minute. But you don't have any wires running off of that to the harness wires. The harness, I didn't want to take it out because I didn't want to confuse myself. But oh well, I'll figure it out. Um, either way, the gauge harness comes with, you got red, dang it, you got red, yellow black and orange of course but then you got green and if i remember correct the green goes to the white and then this is just your ground uh you'll find somewhere under the truck to ground it unless you really just want to run a wire all the way back up here which i would not advise doing i would run a wire somewhere to the frame with a self-tapper there you go that's what i would do you can do what you want to do but that's what i'm going to do um yeah i'm gonna put all this back in the bag so I don't get it all mixed up and I'm gonna finish wiring this up and if I can find the test port that everybody uses for this I will find it and I will show you if not we'll have to drill and tap the pan but I'm pretty positive there's a test port down there but yeah update in just a second all right so I couldn't find the test port I found it but you gotta have they say you gotta have an adapter so it doesn't actually stick in there, probe in there too far or something. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is probably drill and tap the pan. But not tonight. But I got all the wires ran. I'm working on getting the gauges mounted, tightened up. And then I'll drill that down, secure it. But... These two are going to show maxed out because they're not hooked to anything. Ah. But either way, they come on. Turn that light off of them. They're on, and then when you turn the lights on for the dash, they dim. Then all that's left is, like I say, you get these secured. Don't do that. Alright, so once you make sure they work, then go ahead and make sure you run the wires for the sensors on out. Get them in the engine bay at least. And then, if I can get this to work right, they come with these mountain brackets. It's got 8 millimeter nuts. You'll have to bend the brackets out a little bit on this pod to 
make them work right but once you get them started you get everything lined up how you like it these gauges come with these visors right here and i kind of like them so i put them on there i don't know if that's there or not but either way you tighten them down and then i'm going to go ahead and finish this video because my phone's about to die this pod comes with um i think it's an inch and a half long self-tapping screw that goes in right here and then a three inch that goes in right here and you'll have to angle them both in um you sh make sure you do not hit any wires when you drill them in but other than that like i said my phone's about to die so y'all will probably get yeah y'all probably get the finishing whatever when i get everything back together and i can plug my phone in a charge but you know, and if you screw them down, you should be good to put your dash here back together. Don't forget to hook your battery up, tighten your battery connections up, and that should be it. Like I said, we only hooked up the boost gauge. Uh, I'll do a drive video, like I say, of it. And when I finish the... I'll get y'all turned around here. When I finish the um, transmission temperature sensor, when I get it mounted... I'll probably cover that, how I do that. Um, so I'm still debating. I'm probably going to post in the group uh, where, to, where I should do that because I don't know what would be easier. I think the transmission pan is leaking, so and I need to check the bands, adjust the bands while I'm in there. So, um, yeah, I might just go ahead and drop the pan. I don't know yet. But either way, I'm getting... Then when I drill and tap the manifold, I'll... Uh, I'll cover that too and I might put that I might do that tomorrow if I do y'all see it on this video if I don't then yeah I'll make a separate video because I don't want to keep this one waiting too long but yeah that's where I'm at now I'm gonna put all this back together from my phone dies and I will see you on test drive all right we're back together taking for test drive and she's cold so I'm not going to like lay off into it, but pulling this hill, we have boost. We have boost. I plugged the uh, sensor in for the trans temp, so now it's work. It's not working, but it's not pegged out. It's not pegged out. The exhaust temp. Well, it's pegged. They don't have to be pegged out for a while to like it back together, but hopefully we'll do that tomorrow and the next clip. Oh, yeah, I did forget to mention. It is mid midnight. My radio's not working. Oh, wait. Yeah, it is midnight. I forgot when you unplug it, you got to turn it back on every time. But, yeah, see y'all tomorrow, maybe. The next day. All right, so the EGT is not happening. I've run out of time today. Uh, this is also the next day. It is like 6 o'clock, I think. 5, 6 o'clock, something like that. I don't even know. But um, I spent all day. She bought her a little Honda Civic, a 1995 Honda Civic. When I get home, I will video it and show you the video. Show, show it to y'all in the comments. Or, damn it. Ah, uh, when I get home, I will take a video of it so y'all can see it after all this, but uh, The EGT game is probably not happening uh, It's getting cold. It's getting really cold And I just I don't feel like doing it. I got to put a window regulator in that thing tonight. It's super simple I'm not even going to video it because I don't know how to do it myself And I'm actually gonna get her to do it. So I might I don't know but either way the trans temp said so I'm probably telling you this twice. Trans temp, the probe is hooked up and it's just laying under the hood. EGT, it's not hooked up at all. It's laying in the glove box or no, it's in the box behind the seat. But the boost gauge works. And I tell you, this truck doesn't make good boost at all stock for the stock turbo. These first gens are just lacking in the boost department. I was starting to wonder if it worked or not, but that, uh, that is not nowhere close to wide open throttle. When I get the end down here and turn, I'll, yeah, hold on. All right, now that I'm rolling up on my turn here, I got the trailer behind me too, because I had a trailer that car up there today. I'll tell you about that in a second, but. Yeah. 
Yeah, it wasn't on the floor. I ain't gonna put it on the floor with this trailer back here. Cause I don't know my trans temps or my EGTs. It's probably perfectly fine, but I'm still not doing it. But uh, that little car we picked it up the other night. That was a trip. Uh huh. We ended up GPS took us down the road. They had a bridge out. Thank God my dad was with me. He's a truck driver. He backed all the way out that road. Little old narrow road, like a one lane road. Backed us out of that, got us out of that situation. Um, we met the guy, he was he was a nice guy, just kind of shady. Um, the car, he just had put all new front end parts and under it, did not have it aligned, and it was killing the front tires. Uh, so bad we had to take it. I took it on a short test drive. Um, ended up, it was already showing wires, ended up breaking the wires, having a flat. Uh, I loaded it on the trailer, and as soon as I got stopped is when it really started going down. And we took it up today, put four new tires on it, loaded it back on the trailer, trailered it up. I loaded it back on the trailer, took it down to the alignment shop, unloaded it, got it aligned, and she's been driving it ever since. Great little old car. Like I said, I'll show you when I get home. But, uh, yeah. Well, hell, I'm going to drive. I'll see y'all at all right, since it was dark, I didn't get it, but here it is. Little 95 Civic. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a clean little work car for her, and she likes it. I got to put a radio speakers back in it. Uh, put a window regulator in it. It's still messed up. Window's coming off track for some weird reason. I got to figure that out. It needs paint. needs a hood. And it needs this fender replaced again. I didn't do it the first time, but but yeah. Yeah, that's it. More on that later. I got this warming up this morning. I got to change oil in it. Because that thing has developed a major oil leak. So, I'll be driving the first year to work. These last few nights. Lord willing. But, but yeah, if you can hear me, it's going to be all for this video. Um... I will hook up the EGT gauge, hopefully my next off day, and the trans temp whenever I get time. So the forerunner kind of takes priority. Can hear, maybe y'all can hear me better. The forerunner takes priority over the Dodge because it's my daily. I gotta drive it back and forth to work, so I have to have it tip top shape. So, yeah, but hopefully next off day I can get that fixed. I think it's going to be either the timing cover, one of the bolts backed out, because you're supposed to put Teflon tape on it. We never knew that when we put the motor back together. So it's either coming from there, where the bolts out, passing through the, what you call it, the gasket, or it's the front main seal um, where it has wore through the, uh, wore a groove in the crank. Either way, y'all be safe, y'all have fun, see y'all next time.